Hello everyone, welcome back to my English class. Today I am going to tell you or explain the story, the adventure which is written by Jent Narlikar from the book Holiday of Standard 11th and I am Jyoti Singh. In this chapter you will learn about the history of Marathas and Mughals and this story belongs to science fiction. So let's start this story with a brief introduction. Here is the introduction of this story. The chapter of the adventure is a story about Professor Ganga Dharpant Gayatonde who is strangely in a different world. This story is, around, is all about Ganga Dharpant Gayatonde and his different world. He knows it is Pune but the facts are different from what he believes. He decided to go to Bombay via train Jija Mata Express. Jija Mata Express is the name of a train. When he reached Bombay, things were different. When he decides to investigate the history, he finds some surprising facts. The East India Company was still ruling and the Battle of Panipat had won by, won by Marathas. It was different from what he knew and had studied. And this and these things are different what he knew and he had studied. The East India Company was taken away after events of 1857. You can remember 1857. 1850 revolution has a major role in India's history, the battle of Panipat had been won by Mughals. In this story, there are two different things that battle of Panipat was won by Mughals and won by Marathas. So let's start this chapter with line by line explanation. So the Jija Mata Express sped along the Pune Bombay route considerably faster than the Deccan Queen. The Jija Mata Express and Deccan Queen are the names of two different trains, and Jija Mata Express train is faster than the train Deccan Queen. There were no industrial townships outside Pune. On that time, there were no more townships outside Pune. The first stop Lonavla came in 40 minutes. The first stop of the train was Lonavla which came in 40 minutes. The Ghat section that follows was no different from what he knew. The, the Ghat sections he followed was no different. The train stopped at Karjat only briefly and went on at an even greater speed and again the train stopped at Karja, the next station, even at greater speed. It rode through Kalyan and after reaching Kalyan, it rode, it takes speed too much. Meanwhile, the racing mind of Professor, of Professor Gaitonde had arrived at a plan of action in Bombay. Indeed, as a historian, he is a historian who wants to know about history events. He felt he should have thought of it sooner. He would go to a big library and browse through history books. He thought that he would go to a big library and then browse me search and search history books. What had happened in the past? That was the surest way of finding out how the present state of affairs was reached. And he wanted to know the present state of affairs. He also planned eventually to return to Pune and have a long talk with Rajendra Deshpande who would surely help him understand what had happened. The another character in this story, Rajendra Deshpande. Here he said, that is assuming that in this world there exists someone called Rajendra Deshpande. And, and he is assuming that 
there is an, uh, there is a person someone who called rajendra prasad uh, sorry rajendra deshpande the train stopped beyond the long tunnel after a long tunnel the train stopped it was a small station called sarhad the name of the station is sarhad a small station an anglo indian in uniform went through the train checking permits on that time anglo indians in uniform checked the tickets here are some word meanings for you township means towns or villages and road means to move at a high speed while making a loud noise and permit means authorized to do something so here is the explanation of this chapter of this phrase passage professor gayatonde was traveling by jija mata express train which was running along pune bombay route and was fast faster than the deccan queen the first stop of the train was lonavla which came in 40 minutes the professor noticed that there was no that there was no industrial township outside pune city the next stop was the ghat section which was similar to what the professor already knew the train followed to the next stop that is for karja and started speeding at a greater pace than before when the train was in kalyan it moved at high speed the professor came up with a plan to be followed when he would arrive at bombay city he was a historian professor gayatonde was a historian who thought he should have come up with a plan sooner to go to the big library and glance at the history book there he wanted to know how the current situation of india by studying various events he further planned to move back to pune after his work finished and meet with rajendra deshpande to have a discussion over the current events he was thinking about it and assumed if a person named rajendra deshpande exist in this world as he was into his thoughts when the train stopped beyond a long tunnel in a place called sarha he saw an anglo indian in a uniform who was going through the train to check the permit and the next one this is where the british raj begins you are going to the first i presume khan sahib asked when he was in the train someone asked him khan sahib khan sahib asked the professor gayatonde that that is the place where the british raj begins british raj means british rule begin and he asked that if he was going for first time he thought he supposed presumably suppose yes the reply was factually correct gangadhar pant had not been to this bombay before he ventured a question and khan sahib who will you go to peshawar and gangadhar pant replied factually that yes and then he ventured to a question and curiously he asked to he asked khan sahib how will you go to peshawar now after reaching bombay how he he would go to peshawar the train goes to victoria terminus i will take the frontier mail tonight out of central then khan sahib replied that he the train goes to the victoria terminus and then after that he take frontier mail that night out of central and again he asked me a question how far does it go by what you gangadhar pant again asked the question how far it went by what route and what was the route how far does it go bombay to delhi then to lahore and then peshawar a long journey i will reach peshawar
take shower the day after tomorrow. And here Khansai replied that the train would go. Firstly, he went to Bombay and then Delhi and then to Lahore and then Peshawar. This was a that was a long journey and he would reach he would reach Peshawar the day after tomorrow. Thereafter, Khan Sahib spoke a lot about his business and Ganga Dhan was a willing listener. For in that way, he was able to get some flavor of life in this India that was so different and this was and that was a different experience and the train now passed through the sub-urban rail traffic sub-urban means a residential area the blue carriages carried the letter GBMR on the side so let's talk about the word meanings venture means to say something that might be considered as an apology and suburban means residential area and here is the explanation of this passage as the incident was taking place a person named Khan Sahib asked Gai Kaunde if he was going to Bombay for the first time to which he replied yes he asked Khan Sahib about how would he reach Peshawar? He told him the whole route, the train would first go to Victoria Terminus and then he would change the train frontier way from the center. The train will then go to Delhi and then to Lahore and finally Peshawar. It would be a long journey of two days. Khan Sai further talked about his business to Ganga the Pant Gai Kaunde who is a professor who was listening to him willingly. He got to taste a different flavor of the country other than what he saw and knew. The train next passed through the residential rail traffic and he saw a blue carriages with GBMR on the sides. So what is the meaning of GBMR? It means Greater Bombay Metropolitan Railway. The word GBMR indicates Greater Bombay Metropolitan Railway. Explained Khan Sahib and Khan Sahib explained this. See the tiny, see the tiny Union Jack painted on each carriage. A gentle reminder that we are in British territory, and he also indicates that. Professor Gary Conde that he can saw, he could saw Union Jack which is painted on each carriages. And it means that they are they were in previous territory. The train began to slow down beyond Tata and stopped only at its destination, Victoria Terminus. And then the train stopped at Victoria Terminus which is the destination of the train. The station looked remarkably neat and clean. On that time the train, the station was remarkably neat and clean. The staff was mostly made up of Anglo-Indians and Parsis along with a handful of British officers. And they, they could see that the staff was mainly made up of Anglo-Indians and Parsis and had and some British officers. As he emerged from the station, Ganga Dhan found himself facing an imposing building. After emerging the station, he saw an imposing building. The letters on it proclaimed its its identity to those who did not know this Bombay landmark and the letters which are painted on that building it, this indicates that East India House headquarters of the past India company and this building remarks East India House headquarters of the East India company prepared as he was for many songs, Professor Gai had not expected this. The 
East India Company had been wound up shortly after the events of 1857. At least that is what history books say. You, you remember that in the history books, British Com East India Company had been wound up because of 1857 revolution. Yet here is it was not only alive but flourishing. But in contrary, British East India Company was flourishing and alive. It was grow successfully. So history had taken a different turn, perhaps before 1857. How and when had happened? And he asked, how and when had happened? He had to find out. He needs to find out the matters, what had happened in the past actually. Now there are some words. Emerged, it means developed and begin. And imposing means impressive. And proclaimed means to announce something officially. And flourishing means to grow successfully. And the next explanation for you. Khan Sahib explained the full form of GBMR. It means Greater Bombay Metropolitan Railway. He further showed him the Tiny Union Jack painted on the carriages which was a mark for the reminder that they were in British territory. Union Jack is the symbol of British, British territory. As the train moved past the gather, it stopped at the destination Victoria Terminus. The station was neat and thin and the staff consisted of Anglo-Indians and Parsis with few British officers. As the professor got down from the station, he saw a big sign which read East India House Headquarters of the East India Company, which made the professor curious as he did not expect this in Bombay. According to his knowledge of history, East India Company was shut down after 1857 events. The company was standing there which was growing successfully. He was confused as to how history book looked to cut on. He had to know what had happened. As he walked along on my road, as it was called, he found a different set of shops and office buildings. When he reached, when he walked along the road, horn by it, as it was called, he found a different set of shops. In that road, he found different type of shops and office buildings. There was no hand loom house building. Instead, there were boots and Woolworth departmental stores imposing, imposing his impressive offices of Lords, Barclays, Barclays and other British banks as in a typical high street of a town in England. The scene was looked like he, that he was in England. This is, he turned right along Home Street and entered Pope's building. After taking a turn right, he went, he entered in the building Pope's. Here he said, I wish to meet Mr. Vinay Gayatonde, please. He said to the English receptionist, when he entered into the force building, he said, uh, he told the British receptionist that he wished to meet Mr. Vinay Gayatonde. He said, she searched, then the receptionist, she searched through the telephone list, the staff list and then through the directory of employees of all the branches of the firm. After hearing the words of Mr. Gayatonde, he searched through the telephone list,
staff list and then the directory of employees of all the branches of the firm. She should have had and said, I am afraid I can't fight anyone of that in either here or in any of our branches. Here the girl said that he did, uh, she did not find any name of that person in his in in their branches are you sure he works here and again he asked the question that if he was and he asked if he was working here if he was sure this was a view not totally unexpected but if he himself were dead in this world what guarantee had he that his son would be alive. Indeed, he may not even have been born. And he thought that it may be possible that he was dead in that world and how, how his son would be alive. Or it may be happened that he, he was not born. He thanked the girl politely and came out. It was characteristic for him not to worry about where he would stay. His main concern was to make his way to the library of the Asiatic Society to solve the riddle of history. That was not his main concern. But the main concern is that was that he, he wanted to make his way to the library of Asiatic Society to solve the riddle of history. He wanted to solve the riddle of history which was going in his mind. Grabbing a quick lunch at a restaurant, he made his way to the town hall. After taking a lunch in, at a restaurant, he went to town hall. Riddle means mystery or puzzle. Here is the explanation. As the professor walked past the Bombay road in Bombay, he noticed a different set of shops in the street. There were no longer handloom house buildings, but where Boots and Woolworth departmental stores and offices of Lloyds, Lloyds, Barclays and other British originated banks. It was just like a high street in England and this seems like a high street in England. He entered the Forbes building in the home state. He asked the receptionist about Mr. Vinegar Bombay. She searched for quite some time all the telephone lists and the staff list but didn't find anything. She told him that there is no such person working in any branches of the company. He was shocked and did not accept, expect this. He was thinking about what would happen if he would not be alive in this world. He moved out of the building and went to a restaurant to eat lunch. He then went to town hall. Then, yes to his relief, the town hall was there and it did house the library. He entered the reading room and asked for a list of history books including his own. And then he entered to the library and asked for a list of history books including his own book. His five volumes duly arrived on his table. He started from the beginning. Volume 1 took the history up to the period of Ashoka. The first book he, which he read, it was about period of Ashoka. Volume 2 up to Samudra Gupta. And the second book is about Samudra Gupta. And the volume 3 is about Muhammad Ghori. And volume 4 up to the death of Orange. And the volume 4 up to the death of Orange and then up to this period history saw as he knew and 
that on that time the death of orange the history was said as he knew it the change evidently had occurred in the last book but the changes had occurred in the last book gg volume 5 from both ends inwards gangadhar pond finally converged on the precise moment where history had taken a different turn that was the volume where we find that where we found that there was a change there was a different turn in the history here are some word meanings converged means match and precise means exact or accurate and then the explanation of this passage he reached the town hall which had a library inside he entered the reading room and made his way towards history books he looked he took five volumes and started reading from the beginning volume 1 was about the period of ashoka another was about samudragupta and the third one was about muhammad ghori and fourth volume was up to the death of orange he noticed the last volume it had some changes after reading volume 5 he knew about the exact moment where history changed and that phase in the book described the battle of Panipat and it mentioned that the Marathas won it handsomely. And in this phase, he finds that battle of Panipat was won, won by Marathas easily. Abdali was shooted and he was chased back to Kabul by the trumpet Maratha army led by Sadasiv Rao Bhav and his nephew the young Vishwas Rao. Here he found that Abdali was rooted and he was chased back to Kabul by the trunk of by the trunk of over Maratha's army, which was led by Sadasiv Rao and his nephew Vishwas Rao. The book did not go into a blow by blow account of the battle itself and this book did not go into blow by blow rather it elaborated in detail its consequences for the power struggle in India and this book elaborated elaborated the details of consequences and power struggle in India the mother want to read, read through the account everything the style of writing was unmistakably his, yet he was reading the account of for the first time. After writing his book, it was the first time when he read his own book. Their victory in the battle was not only a great moral boost to the Marathas, but it also established their supremacy in North India. And in, in these lines he says that the victory in the battle was not only a great moral boost to the Marathas but it also established their supremacy in northern India. The East India Company which had been watching these developments from the sidelines got sidelined and abandoned its ex pensionist program for the Peshwas the immediate result was an increase in the influence of Bahau Sahib and Viswas Rao who eventually succeeded his father in 1788 and in that time Peshwas if the immediate result was that there was the influence of Bahau Sahib and in Vishwas Rao after succeeding his father. The troublemaker Data Sahib was relegated to
to the background and he eventually retired from state politics and dada sahib who was working to the background but eventually he retired from state politics then to its dismay the east india company met its match in the in the influence of bhau sahib and viswas rao who even sorry new maratha ruler viswas rao he and his brother madhav rao combined political acumen with valor and systematically expanded their influence all over india and after uh, when when viswas rao became the maratha ruler he and his brother madhav rao combined political acumen and valor systematically and expanded their and increased their influence all over india the company was reduced to pockets of influence near bombay calcutta on that time calcutta and in this time we called it kolkata and madras at that time it is called chennai just like its european rivals the portuguese and the french but the british east india company wanted to reduce reduce the pockets of of marathas in bombay calcutta and madras just like that the european rivals and portuguese and the french he did it the same they were accepted sorry for political reasons the base was kept the puppet mughal nizam alive in delhi only the the peshwas kept the puppet mughal nizam alive in delhi whereas peshwas works as puppets of mughal nizam alive in delhi in the 19th century these de facto de facto rulers mean without a law from pune were astute enough to recognize the importance of the technological is doing in downing in europe and there and here he said that pune pune was the astute enough to recognize the importance because of technological is downing in europe they set up their own centers for science and technology and there peshwas and mughals set up their science and technology centers here the east india company saw another opportunity to extend its influence and and there east india company saw an, another opportunity to extend its influence it offered aid and exports and east india company offered aids and exports they were accepted only to make the local centers self sufficient and they accepted it only because of the local centers for self sufficient here our word means relegated to it means assigned to a lower rank and this may means shop political political acumen means political smartness and valor means great courage in battle and de facto means existing in fact with or without any lawful authority and astute means smartness or quick witted and there is the explanation for the maratha ruler the influence of bahau sahib and Vishwas Rao increased, and here the influence of Vishwas Rao and Bhau Sahib was increased. Vishwas Rao succeeded his father in 1780 AD. Dada Sahib was assigned to a lower rank, and he retired from state politics. The first India company, the first the East India Company, met its match in Vishwas Rao. Vishwas Rao and his brother Madhav Rao with their political smartness and 
करेज इन द बैटर फील्ड एक्सपेंडेड देयर इन्फ्लुएंस ऑल ओवर इंडिया द कंपनी वॉज लेफ्ट विद इन्फ्लुएंस इन ओनली अ फ्यू सिटीज इन इंडिया लाइक बॉम्बे कैलकटा एंड मद्रास जस्ट लाइक यूरोपियन पोर्टुगीज एंड फ्रेंच द मराठा कैप्ट द मुगल गवर्नमेंट अलाइड फॉर पोलिटिकल रीजन्स इन द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी रूलर्स वर स्मार्ट इनफ टू रिकॉग्नाइज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी राइजिंग इन यूरोप ऑन द अदर हैंड ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी एक्सटेंडेड इट्स इन्फ्लुएंस बाय ऑफरिंग एड एंड एक्सपोर्ट्स इन द रीजन वेयर दे वेर एक्सेप्टेड ओनली एज लोकल सेंटर्स the 20th century brought about further changes inspired by the west india moved towards a democracy by then the peshwas had lost their enterprise and they were gradually replaced by democratically elect elected elected bodies the sultanate at delhi survived even this transition largely because it wielded no real influence the shahanshah of delhi was no more than a figure had to rubber stamp the recommendations made by the central parliament as it read on gangadhar kaun began to appreciate the india he had seen it was a country that had not been subjected to slavery for the white man white man means britishers it had learned to stand on its feet and knew what self respect was from a position of strength and for purely commercial reasons it had allowed the british to retain bombay as the sole outpost on the subcontinent that lease was to expire in the year 2001 according to a treaty of 1908 gangadhar kaun could not help comparing the country he knew what he was witnessing around him but the same time he felt that his investigations were incomplete and that time on that same time he felt that his investigations were complete how did the marathas win the battle to find the answer he must look for account of the battle itself figure had means a cave image and outpost means a small military camp used as a guard india was a democratic country and at present india is also a democratic country inspired by the west west means other countries of the world during the 20th century and this is 21st century the peshwas of marathas lost their empire and democratic bodies took their place the mughal sultanate at delhi survived the transitions as they had no influence the mughal rulers were no longer a carving on the rubber stamp the professor started like in india as he continued reading about it it was different from the one he believed he saw this country knew how to stand on its feet and it was no longer the same under white men bombay was made an outpost on the subcontinent region by the british according to a treaty in 908 it would expire in the year 2001 the professor was comparing the country he was witnessing now but he still felt that his investigation was complete and he wanted to know more questions about the maratha battle he went through the books and journals before him at last among the books he found one that gave the clue it was 
भाऊसाहेबांची भाकर
then the library asked him to finish as the library was about to be closed at 8 o'clock at night. He noticed he was the only one left in the reading room. He asked the librarian whether he could keep the books with him and asked him about the opening time of the library. The librarian told him that it opens at 8 o'clock in the morning and the professor left the table. He pushed the notes, in, notes into his right pocket and pushed the Bhakar in, book into his left one. We will continue this chapter in the next video. I hope you understand the part 1 of this chapter. Thank you for watching.